In this video, we're doing some product photography right here at home, using a few key pieces of equipment to make our images stand out. I'm mostly going to be shooting on my phone, so this is easily replicatable for you guys at home. Stick around and I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome back to another photography tutorial video where today we're taking a look at product photography, which is one of the things that I do quite often, but I want to find a nice, uh, fast, versatile and mobile setup that we can use for a different range of products. So if you've got lots of different types of products that you're shooting, you want to be able to change things out really quickly, things like your lighting and your backdrop. Now, of course, I don't know the specific products that you're wanting to shoot, but that is uh, not too important for this technique. Um, I'm trying to get a nice versatile setup that can be used for shooting everything from uh, really tiny, small products all the way up to sort of medium sized and even larger items as well. Um, to demonstrate this, I've got a couple of different um, items that I want to photograph today. Uh, the first being a nice set of dice with so this sort of gold and silver metallic finish. Uh, there's a few different dice here, all in a nice box. So I'd actually like to capture the box as well. Um, I also have some more sort of mainstream products, if you like. I do have a uh, can of Monster Energy here uh, that I think we can make look really cool with some lighting. And I've got some uh, Japanese drinks as well with uh, these interestingly shaped bottles and nice colorful labels. So I want to try and find a setup that is easy to shoot this wide variety of different products, all in a way that is eye-catching and pleasing to the eye, but also shows off the product products in their best light. The first thing that you're going to need to think about when you're photographing your products is what kind of surface do you want them to sit on and what kind of background do you want them to have. So for things that are standing up like our drinks, you're going to need to think about a background more than the surface. For things like our, our dye, you're going to need to think more about the surface that they're sat on than you are about the background. So you need to think about how you want your images to look. Do they need a light background or a uh, dark background? Do you want some text? texture and colour in your backgrounds to catch the eye, well, we can think about all of that now before we start even photographing. Maybe at your home or your business, you've got some interesting surfaces to shoot on. If you uh, look around, you'll find uh, wooden tables, desks, um, even concrete floors can look really, really nice with certain products. If you just want a plain white or a plain black background, we have videos uh, going into detail on how to achieve those looks. I'll link them up in the top right hand corner of your screen and down in the description if you want that more classic product photography look. Today, I'm going to be focusing on those textured surfaces and backgrounds. Now, I said that I wanted my setup to be versatile and mobile. What I mean by that is if you've got a uh, concrete floor, you obviously can't take it out to uh, shoot with you um, because maybe you've got hundreds of products to shoot for a client and they don't have a concrete floor, which is unfortunate. And I also want it to be versatile in that if you do have that option of a concrete floor or a wooden table, that's your only option. You only have that one texture, that one surface to shoot on, and all of your images are going to look the same, and they might not suit every different product. The solution to that problem is quite simple. We can use photo boards. So these are uh, lightweight printed boards with textures on them. So uh, to be clear, there's not actually a texture on here. It just looks like wood. It's printed, it's completely flat and smooth, but looking from the top, it's got that printed texture of some aged wood on there. And this one uh, you can see is um, reminiscent of, of a, uh, a brick wall with some cracked paint and all of the mortar uh, chipping out there. So this would make a fantastic backdrop for maybe one of our drinks. And here with this dark background, it might look like a rustic tavern or something for our Dungeons and Dragons dice. So I want to be using different textures like this to suit my different products. I've got a few different photo boards here to take a look at and which one I use is going to uh, be determined by 
the look of the product and the feel that I want to go for in my images. Taking a closer look at our photo boards, there's actually two sizes. So you can see here, we've got a 40 centimeter uh, photo board here, a slightly smaller one, but then we also have this much larger 60 centimeter photo board for those larger products and backdrops. Um, and these are actually printed to scale. So uh, as I mentioned, there's not actually a texture on here. Um, you can't actually feel that wood because it's completely flat. Uh, I mean, even getting this close, it's really hard to tell that that's not a real texture, uh, but it is flat printed on there. There's no actual uh, lumps and bumps, which is really handy for placing products on a flat surface while making them look like they're in a nice, rustic, realistic environment. These textures are actually printed to size as well. So uh, this plank of wood is the real size that the plank of wood was when it was photographed and printed onto the board. Uh, and that's really important because uh, the scale of your um, of your products is going to be represented by the scale of this backdrop. So if you uh, uh, compressed this down and printed a really detailed um, but much, much smaller plank of wood and then placed your products on there, the eye would naturally pick up on the grain of the wood and think that the product is actually much bigger than it is. Uh, so these are one-to-one -one scale printed representations of the actual um, textures of real life. So we've got a concrete one here, we've got a lighter wood, this nice darker rustic wood, and of course that brick wall as well. There's lots more options and all of these are actually available on our website. So I will link up in the top right hand corner and down in the description. If you want to go and take a look at the full range of different um, textures and styles of photo boards that you could use for your product photography. The first product I'm going to photograph today is my dice set. I want to uh, set these down on the dark wooden photo board and uh, see if we can't make them stand out a little bit with some nice, interesting and perhaps colourful lighting. So check out this setup guys. I've brought in a little bit of lighting, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Other than that, all I've done is placed my dice down on the ground just here, and then I'm photographing them on my phone, uh, which is really, really easy to get a lot of freedom of movement, just moving with your, uh, with your camera around your subject and finding those interesting spots to take photographs with. You can get down really low and get a nice low angle. And most importantly here, you can actually Actually look around on the surface of your photo board for the interesting textures that you want. It's detailed enough to be able to take a look down here and see maybe I'd want something a bit more rustic, a bit older looking and I can photograph near these cracks or I can go over here and uh, find a sort of slightly older but painted board that's all worn away or maybe I need uh, a wood knot in my images. Oh, um, obviously you can move out a little bit and get the whole picture as well. Um, so what's making this uh, really, really interesting is our lighting. Uh, bringing in a, an amber lighting arm just here uh, with a diffuser on and a white lighting arm with a diffuser just makes our dice pop all that more. We've got this uh, orange light picking up on all of the gold and then of course the white light making sure that it's nice and representative so people know what they actually look like in real life. All of this put together is a really nice simple setup that you can change really really quickly. Obviously the Adapt Look Studio lighting system here is completely modular as well. I can just unplug that uh, amber arm and maybe plug in a, uh, a red one instead and then bend that red light round. Obviously that's uh, quite Quite intense but we can just take that diffuser from there and instead of um, amber light we've now got some red light instead and obviously that changes the, com the uh, look of the image completely um, and I've just, just done that in a couple of seconds with only one hand uh, so you can see how versatile quick and easy a setup like this can be for changing not only the products but also the whole vibe of your images and of course it's not even necessary that you need uh, colored light you can just either go with a single light setup or maybe uh, two white lighting arms uh, that can work really nicely as well and again we can just change all of these things over really really quickly and we've got a much more conventional looking image there with two white lighting arms and 
have some really nice looking dice down on a rustic background. Now you might decide that you don't want uh, a dark background, so the next obvious uh, change is to just put our dice onto a different photo board. So now we've got a lighter background, which I don't really think suits these die all too well, but uh, it's a good demonstration of how quickly you can change out the whole look and feel of your images just by changing both the lighting and the background. So as you could see, I was doing all of that with one hand holding you guys the camera in one hand and then moving and changing my lighting and backdrops with my other hand. I would probably recommend taking a little bit more time and putting a bit more thought into your own images, um, but as a quick demonstration, that's absolutely fine to just uh, play around and experiment with things. It's something that you should probably be doing uh, yourself is just trying different angles and having uh, the camera freedom uh, to move around and take shots from above and from the side and from low angles will get you a lot of really nice looking, interesting and varied shots very quickly. There is another method to doing this though, and that's involving using a tripod. If you're the type of person that likes to meticulously set up your products and your scenes ahead of time, then you're going to want to see what that looks like from the perspective of the camera. And that is much easier when you've got a camera set up in situ. You can place your camera exactly where it's going to be and check on your image as you build up your products. That's how I'm going to do uh, my next shot uh, using some of my drinks. So here's a slightly more complicated setup, but it's still using all of those same pieces. And when I said we're introducing a tripod, uh, well, what I've actually done is simply prop up my phone against the tripod that's already holding my lighting. And I can make changes to my, uh, my scene here uh, without too much worry about uh, what my photo is gonna look like because I can see it right here on the back of my phone. Uh, now, the lighting has had a bit of an update. Uh, what we've done here is introduce an extra lighting arm. So I've got two white lighting arms now lighting the front of my bottle from two sides because it's really important that we get the right colors on these labels. Uh, but I have introduced a red lighting arm here at the back lighting up our backdrop, which is the wall texture photo board. So that's adding a lot of interest into our image. We've got all of the different contrasts from the lights and the darks of the brick behind uh, my bottle. That light is refracting around in the, uh, the interesting shape of the bottleneck here. Uh, it's looking really, really nice and catching the eye a little bit more than a simple plain, uh, plainly lit and plain backdrop image would do. One of the most interesting things here uh, comes from photographing on a phone. What I've actually done is turned my phone upside down, which has given me a really, really low angle. The camera is actually all the way down here, which would be really difficult with a full size camera. And it's something you should be aware of uh, with your phone that the camera is actually uh, usually all the way up at the top of your phone. So you can move that down to the bottom simply by flipping it upside down. Really neat little trick to get a lot of interesting perspective on your images. These bottles look much taller, much more imposing, uh, much more important and interesting when photographed from a low angle like this. You can also try using the, uh, the various different zoom modes on your phone um, to get uh, some more interesting looks and angles. Maybe moving your phone really up, cl uh, up close on a wide angle uh, would be interesting as well. You don't necessarily need to shoot from far away, um, but you do need to be aware that uh, when you're shooting on a wide angle like this, uh, you might need a larger photo board for your backdrop. Remember, we're only using the 40 centimeter backdrops here. We could be using these big ones if we need more space. Of course, introducing colored lights like this is not necessary if it doesn't suit your product or uh, doesn't suit your web store, for instance. Um, you can just shoot uh, with white light and you can just shoot with a single light if you really want to. These photo boards are fantastic for placing up against a, a window or something like that a single light source and just placing products down on there. Um, I would recommend taking a look at the textures on the board themselves because some of them have very subtle shadows from certain directions that really suit being lit from that same direction.
position. So pay attention to what surface you're shooting on and how the lighting is going to affect and change those images. The darker ones are nice for darker, moodier lighting and the lighter ones are obviously nice for bright, diffused lighting. They all change the vibe of your images. I did take the liberty of changing the vibe of my uh, drinks images. Uh, of course, you've seen this one with the red cap and the red writing, and I used that red lighting arm to just add a bit of highlighted color. But I've also got a uh, blue and a sort of orangey brown drink just here as well. So for those, I used two um, different colored lighting arms. We've got a, a white lighting arm here with um, a cyan filter on the end and an amber lighting arm there for the brown drink. And changing just that light changes the image and really uh, differentiates those three drinks from one another. I also shot my, um, my Monster Energy drink and I, of course, used uh, a nice green light for that one. And my, uh, my wooden box, I went with a nice natural white look uh, just to make it look nice and rustic uh, like this um, ornate wooden box should be. You can see here that shooting on your phone is absolutely viable and these photo boards are fantastic for changing out those looks of your images really quickly along with some interesting lighting to make things uh, stand out and become much more eye-catching. Let me know down in the comments whether you're the type of photographer that likes to shoot on a textured surface like this, or if you prefer the uh, plain black and white look for your product images. Do let me know what you think of my images as well, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. Hit subscribe for more product photography ideas, inspiration, and tutorials coming in the future. For now, that is all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.